Hey guys, how many of you cried today looking at those charts? Hope you guys are coping well today, because the stock market was dripping red all day long. Stocks got brutalized on bad news coming from no other person than Jerome Powell himself. Funny enough, the so-called news he presented to us, we had already established that would happen. I have been calling out that the Fed would have to elevate and speed up taper because inflation is too disproportionate and out of control. I have been hammering this would come since a month or so ago, and now Jerome Powell has been forced to acknowledge that might be the road we are going soon enough if the economy doesn't magically fix itself up overnight, which in other words means this will 100% happen. Just like I told you last week, get ready and comfortable looking at red charts, red days and red months because this is going to be the new temporary normal for the foreseeable short-term future. Add to that the spread of the new variant in the midterm elections and you will be seeing a shifting and panicking market. I remember being called a shill spreading FUD because I was coming across as a bit too pessimistic about the future. Well, here we are now, and facts, reason and logic have proven me right once again. If being a shill implies telling the truth and being on point on my predictions, then I am the biggest shill of all and proud of having such title. We have a lot to talk about today, so let's get to it. Quickly though, I will link this morning's video for everyone to watch in the comments below. Thank you to all that showed up to watch it. Before we begin, let me quickly state that I am not a financial advisor, and that all content discussed in this channel is simply information gathered that I deem important for people to know, so that they can make informed decisions. All efforts are aimed to better understand the nature of the current market in anticipation of the greatest squeeze in financial history. Let's get started. What happened today? Why did the stock market dip so hard? Easy. Wall Street's favorite idol and savior, Jerome Powell, appeared before the Senate Banking Committee alongside Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen this morning for a two-day hearing. In a prepared testimony, Powell said the variant that was identified last week in South Africa alongside risks of intensifying supply chain disruptions have fueled a surge, which he somehow called surprising, in inflation this year. This surge has now the potential to restrain the supply of labor once again. Fed officials have pledged to keep interest rates near zero until they are confident that inflation will be able to achieve the longer-run 2% goal. If the economy starts experiencing a slowdown in hiring alongside more persistent intervals of elevated inflation, it will bring the Fed's goal into greater conflict, which will inevitably create difficulty in a set of policy trade-offs. This new variant, mild as it is reported, is likely to keep many Americans on the sidelines of the labor market statistically speaking. This will 100% put pressure in the Fed to conclude wage and price measures will grow more entrenched. Powell made an important statement which I quote, greater concerns about the virus could reduce people's willingness to work in person, which would slow progress in the labor market and intensify supply chain disruptions. He then added some of the concerns we are seeing with rising energy prices, increased rent prices and brisk wage gains as factors that will keep inflation elevated. Thing is, if you have watched my morning videos, Wall Street has absolutely no intention of lowering rent prices because they are making an absolute killing in the real estate market, where they are parking a ton of cash and essentially buying all the best property to rent it. I know Jerome Powell knows this, and the way he omitted to talk about policy to restructure the system to really put the brakes on Wall Street goes to show he will rather let inflation keep on growing, Americans suffering just so that his pals can get their $10 billion yacht. Powell then said some of the forecasters at the Fed said they continue to expect inflation will move down significantly over the next year as supply and demand imbalances abate while simultaneously stating that supply constraints remain hard to predict and that it now appears that factors pushing inflation upward will linger well into next year. Let me save you the brain power and smooth this out for you. What Jerome Powell is doing is PR speak. He is saying yeah, we think by next year things will be better, but just so you know, the factors causing things to get to where we are right now are actually getting worse and worse, but you know, saying we will bounce back strong sounds so much better than acknowledging you don't know what you are doing or worse, that you are causing this on purpose to let Wall Street off the hook. The Fed closed a chapter into its aggressive pandemic policy at their last meeting. The Fed still intends to want to end asset purchases before lifting interest rates, which are being held near zero like I said. We will see how this goes. If I had to sum up all that happened today in a single sentence it would be, the transitory part that the Fed and Powell told us was the reason for inflation has been retired, because it's here to stay for years to come. Another reason for the drop in stock futures is because drug makers raised concerns that COVID vaccines won't work as well against this new variant called Omicron. As you might imagine and seen this morning, the market freaked out, 
The S&P 500 fell 1.7%, Nasdaq shed 1.3% and the Dow dropped 600 points. It was like waking up and turning the lights on to see that your booty call just had their period, just an absolute bloodbath. Pay attention to what I am about to say, because it is key and important in order to set correct reasonable expectations for what is now to come. Investors will be trying to parse and assess the risk that this new strain will bring. With drug makers raising concerns about their vaccines being less potent against Omicron, and a general lack of solid hard information as to what could happen, the markets will be uncertain for the foreseeable couple of months. Expect volatility, huge price drops, and outright bloodbaths in weeks and months to come until a new proper and adequate vaccine comes out. Inflation will be another factor that will contribute to this weakness. The Fed is not inspiring much hope to the markets, so expect more risk on investments overall as the stock markets will experience more volatility. Last week was hard, today was bad and the future is dire, but I will say this. There is no better time to buy than now. You can bet the biggest winners of the stock market are bidding their time researching where to best put their money because the market will bounce back from this. I don't think these two issues are likely to cause a market crash in the short term near future, so don't place your hopes on senseless and irrational foundations. Buy assets to good profitable investment opportunities and hold though this amalgam of economic issues. Only then will you be able to reap the rewards of your hard patience and due diligence. I don't think I have to say that I will be buying tons of meme stocks in these coming months, but I just did just in case you were wondering. Something interesting came out today. A trusted source that goes by the Kilted Trader confirmed that only 28.7% of GameStop's traders that took place yesterday were lit orders. That means almost 75% of all orders went through dark pools and whatever other manipulative system shorters have devised. Pretty wild and disappointing overall to see, and it makes me want to buy more. Lastly, let me update you guys on Evergrande. The news have gone from bad to worse, as Evergrande has appeared to be buckling under its debt and investors are now rushing to get out. However, Ashmore Group is looking at the situation differently. London-listed Ashmore has bought almost another $100 million worth of bonds for the debt-stricken developer. With other holders like Prudential and Royal Bank of Canada cutting their exposure on Evergrande, Ashmore has set themselves as the biggest holder of Evergrande's dollar-denominated bonds. Quite a risky bet, but if for some reason Evergrande was to bounce back, Ashmore is going to make ridiculous amounts of profits. It's a small development, but an important one to know about. Let's now talk about today. The Fed submitted over $1.517 trillion in reverse repo operations today. Dark pool trades for AMC accounted for 59% of the total volume today, while dark pool trades for GameStop accounted for 46% of the total volume today. AMC had a larger amount of buy orders than its sell orders, with GameStop also having a larger amount of buy orders than sell orders. Now, let's talk about performance. AMC traded bearishly today, losing over 7%. During the pre-market, AMC fell down from yesterday's after-hours trading. It would find support slightly above the VWAP until market opening. Upon market opening, AMC had a slight surge from 36.60 to 37 before it started plummeting and I mean falling and trading touching the lower band of the VWAP. AMC would eventually reach the lowest point of the day at 32.75 before bouncing back. It would have a small run upwards, two times testing the VWAP but being unable to break the resistance. AMC was hit with a small short attack before the market closed, closing at 33.94, below the VWAP. As for tomorrow, AMC will find support at 33.42, 32.50 and 31. Resistance will be met at 34.50, 35 and 36.18. AMC is heavily oversold and should see some type of bounce back. We have fallen as predicted, but well below the levels I suspected. If further ill news come out this week, AMC will fall below $30 at some point. If we bounce back, I will say 35 is pivotal. If we are not consolidating above 35 by Thursday, we are likely to end the week below it amazing trading and buying opportunity for those willing to buy the dip. GameStop traded bearishly today, losing over 2%. The stock opened to serious weakness that had it drop from 204 all the way down to 188. After trading near the lower band of the VWAP, GME bounced up, testing the VWAP but being unable to break the resistance. After a small retracement, GME gained enough strength and finally broke above it, reaching 196.95. 
After a small retracement, GME once again bounced up, closing at 196.21, above the VWAP. As for tomorrow, GameStop will find support at 192, 190, 188 and 185. Resistance will be met at 201, 203.95 and 206.50. GameStop is way oversold and I can confidently believe it will be above 200 by Friday if no further bad news drop the stock. However, shorters have found plenty of weaknesses, so expect nothing and hope for everything. I couldn't buy the dip today unfortunately, so here's to hoping for another great discount by Kenny. And that is all I have for you guys today. Let me know what you thought of the video down in the comments below as well. I will link today's morning video down in the comments as well for all to watch if you missed it. Remember to watch the morning video if you missed it. If you want to support this channel, I have a Patreon link in the description as well as some one-time donation links for Cash App and PayPal. Thank you again for being a part of this channel. I will continue striving for better content. Enjoy the rest of your day and to the moon.